And if you fall short, because sometimes it happens, well, then you're not too short, you know. But if you just shoot for barely passing, what happens when you fall short when you shoot for barely passing? It's likely that you, you'll really fall short, you know. Yeah. Eddie, can you hit pause, please? Well, it, I, you know, when I look at test results, it's sort of interesting. It's like, you know, every class is different. Every class responds differently. Every class has its own life, you know. And um, usually, th from my experience, probability has been the most difficult part of the class for some people, you know. Um, you know, but, and which is why all the, all the probability multimedia was created. You know, but you know the class did. It's like people did really either very well, or they what? Or they bombed completely. Um, and I think some of you guys did do a great job in the sense that you did do the practice. You remember I said do go do that. You guys did it. I know you did because I can tell. Exactly. And as a result, it it pays off. You know, see what I'm saying? It's like you don't want to come back and go, ah, oh, you have to take this all over again? You don't want to do that. Who wants to do that? Who wants to take any class over again? I don't. You know, you're here now. You don't want to do it all over again. So, um, you know, so, so do that again. Do it again. It's not going to be a surprise. It's going to be straightforward stuff. Um, but okay, you know. Well, I mean, I, I guess I could, but you guys know what the, I guess I could, because they're, they're all the same stuff. Like a lot of students in, in my past, what they've, students have usually said to me in the past, it's always been strange. I don't understand, I think I know why they say it, but it's always been strange. People say, your test questions are different than the lectures. They're like, what are you talking about? It's still at least one. It's still this, it's still that. If anything, I try to make the language easier, not what you read in the book. You know, but what you read in the book is very good and interesting. It's like something like this. I try to keep it all simple so you guys can identify what you really need to know to answer the question. When you read the book, you might say, oh, there's a lot of information here. I go, yeah, there is, but it's designed to show you really um, that this stuff could be used in a lot of different areas, to recognize it when you see it. That's why, that's why Trilla does what he does, and that's why his book is, I love his book. Some of you guys hate it. I love, I love that trailer book. It's one of my favorite all-time books, period. You know, I'd read it just for fun because I learn a lot of stuff by, oh, look at his example that he did. That's a great example. You know, it's a great setting. It's very interesting. Um, but I try to keep it simple to say, hey, here's eight students showing up. You know, eight students are coming in 60 minutes. What is that to 18 minutes? Because those are all the tools that you use to answer the Poisson questions. You know, so, like, it's always a weird thing. Like, yeah, I can post some of those same questions, but, or I can make them up my own, you know, the own questions are all the same. So, I mean, yeah. And it's straightforward. Like, you got binomial, having children. You got binomials when um, P is not the same, you know, P is not the same as Q, the left-handed, right-handed analogy. To me, that's all you really need. I mean, that's all it is. The analogy of having children, the analogy of left-handed, right-handed people. All the settings, they can change the setting, but it's the same thing. Um, Poisson arrivals, instead of having students arrive, what does your book say? Maybe it says, ah, earthquakes arrive. See what I mean? It's an earthquake. It's no different whether it's an earthquake or whether it's a student arriving. They're all the same. So take comfort in that. That's where, that's where you can say, ah, oh, good, they're all the same. I can do these questions. But sometimes students want to see every different scenario. OK, now do the earthquakes. It's like, what's well, no different? How many earthquakes arrive? Oh, three. Three earthquakes arrive in a 100-year period? And then they say, what's the probability in the next year? See how you have to convert, or the next 10 years? You have to convert that three the way we did here with students. So it's, you know, when people say that, it's like, well, they're all similar. If you're Poisson, if you focus on the mechanics like we do here, you do all those problems with the same thing. It's just no different. Um, but the big thing is, 
you know, practice and doing it right. You know, you get, you get the instruction, you get the guidance, now you practice. Practice that stuff. That's the key to anything. I mean, you do that, you're going to be successful at anything you want. You have that discipline to do it. Anything you want to do, you'll be able to do. Because most people are average. Average. I'm very average. But I'll tell you one thing. I will work harder than anyone you'll ever know. Not because I want to get good at something, really. But if it really interests you, you work really hard at that. And then pretty soon there's just some people who's more than, you become more than average, but you're really average. It's practice. Okay, because anything you're really good at, you sort of just what? You take, you take, you take it for granted. If you're good at something, you won't practice. You'll just take it for granted. It's human nature. Anybody really good at something that you just don't practice? You're so good? No? And then other things you want to get better at, you practice, you work hard? Fine, you work hard at something, you're gonna, you, you, you'll never be, you know, you'll do whatever you want. That's the key. Working hard, practicing, then you do whatever you want. That's the secret. 